Good morning, everybody. So great to see you back here. You know, I was a little bit worried because we were talking about fears and phobias last week. I was scared I might have scared you away, but I had faith that you would come back here for another fun focus Sunday school lesson, focusing on our faith, trusting in what you, oops, sorry, wrong slide. Trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And so before we get uh, rolling with today's lesson, um, I'm going to play another picture game with you guys and see if you can tell me what you think the picture is. You ready? Okay. Very detailed. What do you think this is? If you said a leopard or a cheetah, more like a cheetah, you would be correct. What about this one? What do you think that is a close-up picture of? If you said butterfly or thought about a butterfly, you would be correct. All right, what about this one? If you said soccer ball, a lot of you guys play soccer, you would be correct. And finally, this picture, nice and summery picture. What do you think that is? If you thought it was a Hawaiian shirt, kid wearing her a Hawaiian shirt, you're spot on. Good job, everybody. The reason why we played this game today is because sometimes we kind of get something called tunnel vision. We get so focused on what we think we know is right or think we know something and it turns out to be something different. And we also kind of make those thoughts and assumptions of how we how we see other people. And a lot of the time, or, or some of the time at least, some of what we think we know about a person is completely wrong. And so our big bottom line picture today is knowing Jesus can change how you see people. And again, we're going to go ahead and continue to focus our attention in our Bibles, the New Testament, and the book of Acts, okay? And again, this is the time after Jesus has died, risen, gone back to heaven to be with God, and the disciples are now apostles. They're spreading the news about what happened. They want to tell other people about Jesus, and they're so excited but we're going to learn in our story, just as some of the tunnel vision things we might have gotten wrong, we were focusing on one thing and forgetting to see the whole picture. Some of them were a little bit wrong, too. You guys ready to get going? Let's do it. Okay, so as Jesus' followers spread the word about his death and resurrection, the number of believers was this small, and they began to grow and grow and grow and grow and get bigger, which is what we want, which is really cool. And Peter was one of those leaders, one of those people who would go from town to town and tell people. He was sharing the good news about Jesus and healing sick people too. In the town of Joppa, people even raised a woman from the dead through the power of God's Holy Spirit. And the number of people, a number of believers in Joppa also grew. And people stayed there because he wanted to lead them and teach them more so they would continue to believe and learn more about God and learn more about Jesus. Um, Peter stayed with a man named Simon who made things with leather. Can you think of something made of leather that you use now? I'm thinking a leather belt. Anyway. Sidebar, but I just, I was curious. 
and Simon lived beside the sea. Peter had spent time with Jesus. Remember, when Jesus was alive, he was one of his followers, one of his disciples. And he knew about God's plan to save people. He had seen that. He had walked with Jesus. He had pre seen Jesus perform all these miracles. So if anybody was an authority or a leader or could tell people about Jesus, Peter was your guy. But even Peter didn't quite understand God's big, big plan, even though he had seen and, and done all these things with Jesus. Now, Peter's over here staying with Simon, and about 40 miles away was a Roman officer. And Roman officers weren't Jewish. For the most part, they weren't. But this Roman officer named Cornelius believed in God. He believed in God so firmly that he prayed and he worshiped and he did really good things. He was very helpful. When somebody was in need, Cornelius was there to help them out. He was doing the very nice Christian thing and he was worshiping God through his actions. And as Cornelius prayed one day, God sent an angel in a vision. The angel spoke to Cornelius and let's hear what the angel said in the book of Acts. The angel said, your prayers and gifts to poor people are like an offering to God. So he has remembered you. Now send men to Joppa. Have them bring back a man named Simon. He's also called Peter. He's staying with another Simon, a man who works with leather. His house is by the sea. When the angel shows up and tells you to do something, well, you do it, right? I think I would. I might be a little shocked. Oh, might be a little surprised. Oh. But if an angel comes and tells me God wants me to do something, I think I would do it. I'm pretty sure I would. And so did Cornelius because, again, he was a believer in God. So Cornelius called two servants and had them go off to find Peter. Now, at the same time, this is interesting. Isn't that cool how God works? He sends angels. He sends visions to people. Around noon the next day, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He got hungry and wanted food. His tummy was probably growling. He was hungry. It's time for lunch. While the meal was being prepared, Peter had a vision. And this is from the book of Acts again, chapter 10. He saw heaven open up. Then he saw something that looked like a large bed sheet. It was being let down to earth by its four corners. It had all kinds of four-footed animals in it. It also had reptiles and bird in it, birds in it. And a voice said, get up, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, no, I've never eaten anything that isn't clean. The voice spoke to him a second time and said, do not say anything is not pure that God has made clean. This happened three times. And then the sheet went back up to heaven. Now, in case you're wondering, Peter must have been confused because back in the Old Testament, Jewish people weren't allowed to eat those certain foods, certain animals. They were considered unclean. So Peter's probably scratching his head going, what do you mean they weren't clean and now they are? Again, Peter must have been really confused about what that meant, like God is rewriting the rules here. But about the same time, the men sent by Cornelius arrived at the gate. They asked if Peter were staying there. Peter was still on the roof, still praying, and God's Spirit spoke to Peter. Here's what the Spirit says in the book of Acts. Simon, he said, three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Don't let anything keep you from going with them. I, as in God, have sent them to you. Peter obeyed the Holy Spirit and went downstairs to greet the men. 
he asked them why they had come. Here again in our the book of Acts is their answer. We have come for Cornelius, the Roman commander. He is a good man who worships God. All the Jewish people respect him. A holy angel told him to invite you to his house. Then Cornelius can hear what you have to say. Peter invited the men to be his guests. Well, we can imagine that Peter started to understand what that vision of the sheet and the animals and the reptiles looks like. Why do we, why can he understand that? Just like it was forbidden for Jews to eat certain foods back in the Old Testament, it was also forbidden, not allowed, for a Jewish person to enter the home of a non-Jewish person. But it seemed like God was making new rules about what was clean. And here's the really big part. The story of Jesus just wasn't for the Jewish people anymore. It was for everybody. It was for Roman officers like Cornelius and his family. It was for Jewish people and it was for people like you and me. Now the next day, Peter, the three men, and some of the believers set out from Joppa. And by the following day, they arrived at Caesarea and went to Cornelius' house. Peter had never, once, never, <clears throat> never stepped inside the home of a non-Jewish person. But inside the home, Cornelius had gathered all of his relatives and friends to hear from Peter. The commander actually lowered himself, bowed and as, as a sign of deep respect to Peter. And Peter was like, no, 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 no. You don't need to do that to me. I am just a man, just like you, telling others about Jesus. Cornelius explained to Peter everything the angel had told him, that God had heard his prayer, that he should be, send men to Joppa to bring Peter back to his house. Cornelius told Peter that he and his family were ready to listen and to hear to, to listen to Peter and to learn more about what God had to say to them. Then Peter shared with them everything how God had sent Jesus to share God's love. He explained what you and I already know that Jesus had taught and healed people through God's power. He shared how Jesus had been killed and how God had raised him from the dead three days later. While Peter spoke, God sent his Holy Spirit to be with Cornelius and his family and friends. The Jewish believers who had come with Peter were amazed. Oh, amazed faces, everybody. Oh. God had given his, his spirit to these new believers, even though they weren't Jewish. When Peter realized that God had given the Holy Spirit to Cornelius and his families and friends, he knew there was no reason that they couldn't be baptized. Have you been baptized? I was baptized as a baby, so I don't remember it, but a lot of us were. And that's just what Peter did. He baptized Cornelius and all of his family and friends in the name of Jesus. Then he stayed with them for several days. He was so excited because God had helped him to look at people in a completely different way. And that's because of our, of our bottom line today. Knowing Jesus, knowing Jesus, oh, I'm sorry, helps us see people, changes the way we see people. <clears throat> Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever met somebody and thought one way about them, like right after meeting them, and then it turns out a little while later, you're completely wrong? That happened to me once. Let me, I'm trying to. So before I started working at Faith Lutheran, I was working at another church. And I was on a mission trip with some older kids. They were middle school age group kids. And we were in um, downtown Los Angeles. And on one of the days um, on this mission trip, they asked us to go to a veteran's hospital 
veterans are people who had been in the military and they've either retired or left since then. That means they're veterans. A lot of them are a little bit older and, and need medical help. <clears throat> so, so one morning we end up at the Veterans Hospital in Los Angeles and they gather us all together and they tell us a little bit about the hospital and they give us um, our choice of things that we can do. And there was one lady that volunteered there every week. <clears throat> Her name was Beverly. And when I first met Beverly, she wasn't exactly friendly. In fact, she wasn't friendly. You'd say hi to her and be like, hi. She'd be really kind of gruff. She looked kind of tough. Looked like somebody I wouldn't be friends with if we were back in Albuquerque. She just had a really, I don't know, something about her. She just had this really tough exterior. And on the outside, she just seemed really mean, really kind of, again, just tough. And so after the orientation, after they get, told us what the assignments were, we let the students choose where they wanted to be or where, where they wanted to serve in the hospital. And of course, they picked everything except working with Beverly, which left me working with Beverly. And I was thinking, even to myself, I was like, oh, great. This is going to be a really long morning working with this person who just seems so tough and mean. And let me tell you, boys and girls, I was so wrong about Beverly. I can't even tell you how wrong I was. She turned out to be one of the sweetest, nicest people I've ever I've ever had the chance to meet. Um, her husband had been in the military and her son was in the military. And so she really, really cared about these veterans. And our job was to pass out coffee and donuts um, while the veterans were waiting in the waiting rooms. So, like they could come up to us and it was free and all that kind of stuff. So it was kind of fun to do that. But she was super chatty with them she talked to them um, because she was there every week. They knew her. She knew them. And what, I'll never forget this one old guy. He came up and he looked so sad. Um, he must have gotten some not so great medical news. I don't know what was wrong with him. I don't know what the news was. But he just came up to, to her and his face was just so long and sad. And he was like, I should have never gotten old. And I'll never forget, Beverly stopped what she was doing and, and showed him her husband's dog chain, which is what soldiers wear. And she said, he didn't give up. Don't you give up either. And she was telling him in that statement that I love you, that I care for you. I am here every week at this time. So if you, when you come back for follow-up appointments, come find me and we can talk. And that is how I learned. Oh, by the way, I've got a picture of her. This, I, she impressed me so much that I ended up taking a picture with her because I didn't want to forget her. And I haven't seen her in like 10 years it's, or, or longer. But Beverly showed me that knowing Jesus can change the way that you see people. God loves each and every one of us. He loves Simon. He loved Peter. He loved Cornelius. God didn't just come for those three people. He came for everybody. He came for the people that we first think about. He came for Beverly. He came for me. He came for your parents. And he came for parent our parents. He came for people who don't even know him yet. So Jesus came for everybody. And once we know that and we get past what we think about certain people, it changes our mind. Knowing Jesus changes how we see people. So let's thank God for that in our prayer today. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving all of us so much. You sent Jesus to be our Savior. We know when we put our trust in you and follow after you, it changes everything in our lives. 
including the way we see other people. Help us to see everyone the way they really are, created by you and loved by you. Help us to live like Jesus and to, and to trust others and to treat others the way they want to be treated. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So this week, I want you to kind of think about who are some people I've been wrong about? Has it been somebody you didn't think you'd like, like I did, and then they became one of your really good friends? Has it been a bully? How, who else have you been wrong about? Knowing Jesus changes the way we see other people. And it's a great lesson. It's a great reminder. And I hope you have a fabulous week. I hope you had a great 4th of July. And I so look forward to seeing you again right back here next week as we continue to focus and take a closer look. Till then, bye.